Hello and welcome to Leaders Up Close and Personal. This is a program uh, sponsored by the University of Central Florida's uh, Engineering Leadership and Innovation Institute. We appreciate Duke Energy for their support. And today we have with us Brian Critcher, Senior Vice President of Texas Instruments. So Brian, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Look forward to hearing your thoughts on leadership. Great, looking forward to it. And I know one of the things you've talked about is the competitive spirit yeah. and needing to have that competitive spirit. Maybe you can just share a little bit why is that important and then also how do we balance that on a team yeah. and team dynamics? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I think uh, for me being competitive is extremely important and I think for a team, um, first off, I think you, you have to have uh, a, a common uh, competitor, a common goal that you're all going for. I think that helps mitigate some of the internal competition if you're always pointing at the same same competitor and the same goal. So I think first of all, a team needs to have that. Mm -hmm. I think in t inside the team though, I, I actually like a little bit of healthy friction as I call it. I think it one, it uh, is assuming that roles and responsibilities of the team members are clearly defined. Um, everyone has a piece of the puzzle they have to deliver for that final product, that final solution or whatever that final uh, deliverable is. And assuming you hold the standards high, mm -hmm. there's enough healthy friction to hold each other accountable. So the, the, competitive to, the competitiveness to me in that scenario is just everyone holding each other accountable into an extremely high standard. And if the leader can keep you focused on the end goal or that end competitor that you're trying to beat, uh, the teams usually work pretty seamlessly together when you have those things going together. Okay, so clearly competitiveness is great, but it's yeah. about the team being working together. Yeah, and focus on one common objective, one common goal, or maybe it's even beating one common competitor right. uh, at the end of the day. So they're really competing outside, not internal. Yeah, the yeah. internal stuff is, you don't, you don't want that friction, but I think, again, if they can hold that, that bar really high for each other and that level of accountability, the team will perform better and they'll ultimately win, right? right. And that's, that's really where I think it's a, a slight tweak to what com competition is internally, but holding the bar high and that accountability helps a lot. Okay. Yeah. So when they win, yeah. how do you celebrate? You know, it, it depends on the team, right? Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think first and foremost, you got to make it personal, right? Anyone can, can have a party, anybody can have a happy hour, anybody can do that stuff, but you know, do you have an opportunity to, to recognize those efforts to uh, the person's significant other? Um, I don't know about you, but if you know if my boss said something to my to my wife about how great a job I'm doing, that'd feel pretty good. I would, be. right? Or if there's some things that maybe that person's been spending a lot of energy inside working, right? And you know they love to to go to uh, the opera or something in the arts, and so does their significant other. Get them some tickets, force them, almost right. force them to get outside. Um, you know, try to find some personal ways to connect with them, not just uh, the, necessarily the team environment. And I think the other thing is just recognize it. I think we go sometimes a little too far in pushing the envelope on what are we going to do next, and you know, just recognize that you appreciate it, um, the value of that contribution to the overall organization, and 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 that you do you do understand the work that they put into. It. And I think uh, sometimes we miss that, just mm -hmm. the recognition of, of it actually happening. So those things combined and making it a little bit personal right. seem to seem to go off pretty well together. So how do you form that personal relationship and understanding with team members then, right? So if you're the, the leader of it, yeah, it sounds like personal relationship is yeah, key. Yeah, you got to have a personal relationship. I think uh, we are human beings. Right. I mean, I, I, thank goodness we're not a world of robots and we can just program everybody to go do a job. You know, you, you need people's hearts into the into this uh, the role or the objective. Um, you need the team working together, and and you need to understand what makes people tick. Mm -hmm. Right, not you know, not everybody ticks the same way. Not everybody has the same personality. Not everybody has the same motivation. So, you know, understanding some of those things uh, can really make the team, as I call it, the team really hum and, and gel together. Um, and it also can can help you in terms of retaining those people and keeping them energized and motivated, uh, and not hitting the snooze bar five times right. in the morning because they really don't feel energized to come to work anymore. So, I, I think you got to do that. Uh, not just to be successful, but just to have a great team dynamic overall. Is there one or two characteristics that the leader needs to have? Yeah. To, be, to have that personal relationship. So what attitude, yeah. core belief does a leader need to bring to the room? Yeah, I think they, they need to bring a, a diverse mindset, understanding that not everybody is created equally and not everyone has the same beliefs or the same ideas. 
and you have to be open-minded to that, right? And I think that's the power of having a, a, a diverse team, different thoughts, different ideas coming together. You usually come up with a better resolution, a better product, whatever it may be at the end of the day. So I think the leader has to be open-minded to that. I think they also have to force it a little bit to ensure they don't have everybody looking the same on the team, that mm -hmm. all has the same experience, all has the same ideas. You, you have to think about that up front and uh, play the dominoes out uh, just right uh, to have that perfect match. And I think the more you can do that, although it's not easy and you can't do it all the time, but the more I think you can sprinkle in that diverse ingredient of thought and, and talent, race, whatever it may be, I think the end product is always better. Um, but the leader has to believe in that and they have to go, go push to make that happen. So, so leader has to believe in diversity. Yes. I've also heard you talk about and share the leader has to be human and humble. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why does the leader need to be humble? You know, first off, I mean, the leader is exactly that, the leader. They may be contributing, but it's the sum of all the parts, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, the credit really goes to the team. Not, not to the person leading the team. And I think that's, that's really what I talk about being humble. Uh, first and foremost, humble about the successes, humble about um, the contribution from all the team members, but also being humble about, I guarantee you there's some competitors out there or some other people thinking about the same thing. Let's not rest on our laurels and be mm -hmm. that excited about this. Let's be humble that it's a great first step, but somebody, now we have a target on our back, right? Yeah. So now we might need to run even a little bit faster now. So being humble about the position you're in, um, so it does drive you to become even better uh, down the road. Because somebody, like I said, is coming after you. Sure. And uh, you better recognize that and, and, and make sure it happens. So. so how hard is it to maybe share that value or as you groom new leaders? Yeah. For them to get that view of competitiveness, diversity, and humility. Yeah. I, I think... Um, First and foremost, I think um, when we hire a leader into that role, we have to first make sure that we see some of those traits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do they have some of those innate traits built inside of them and we've seen it? Uh, I don't want to set a person up for failure by putting them in the wrong role or the wrong leadership position. So assuming we see that, I think being able to reinforce when we see it from that person when they're in their role, when we don't see it. So being very balanced on that feedback of things that we want to see more of less of, et cetera. So I think it gets down to the feedback piece and being able to help groom that leader, coach them, find ways to intersect the meetings they're having or places where you would expect to see some of those leadership traits really come out. Um, and then get some third party feedback, mm -hmm. right? Um, in many, many ways you can get that and, and try to, to get that feedback so you can give it to that individual. Um, you got to coach these folks. Everybody needs coaching. I need coaching. I need everybody needs the feedback. There's blind spots in everybody's game, right? right? And I think uh, if you go in it with that mindset, um, it, it'll work out great in the end. Yeah. Great. Well, Brian, thank you for sharing your views on leadership sure. and being able to compete to win. It's about humility, diversity. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate your time for sharing that. Sure. Yeah. So, Thanks for having me. Appreciate welcome. you guys having me on here. This has been Leaders Up Close and Personal, again, sponsored by UCF's Eli Squared. Thank you.